Thank you, Madam Chair. We do not, when we review a request, and Mr. Lawson should know this better than anyone, because he sat up here on this panel for a long, long time and done a great job. We have laws that we have to follow. We have guidelines that we have to follow. We held Heidi Gates feet to the fire, and they submitted in what we needed to be able to review. Melissa and myself have sat down and reviewed it from front to back. We have reviewed it based off of the comprehensive plan. We have reviewed it from riding the roads, looking at where it would go. And based on the comprehensive plan, based on it being designated as prime farmland, staff recommends denial of the application and it will go to the county commissioners on February the 6th at 5 o'clock. Excuse me, what did you say? Did you recommend uh, this approval? No, that's correct. Let's go. Okay, um, do I have a motion? <coughs> or do I actually, do I have any other questions? Okay. Who did you want to direct that? I guess. If you would like to come back up yeah, to the podium. I just want to know the difference between the noise that Ms. Howard is talking about compared to your noise. Because you said that only when the children are the transformers and converters. Yeah. Were. So essentially, the other And you probably is, said it. I'm sorry. You probably no, 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 not at all. I'm happy to kind of restate. So essentially, the equipment from the other project, which uh, Ms. Howard was speaking of, we, we don't know what they use, what specifications <coughs> those were, if they were rated. So we can't really speak to any of the noise that's been created by another farm. All that we can speak to is the renderings that was done by this third party engineer that essentially took our equipment. Um, they, from that, were able to see how loud the, the sound would be from that and then created this noise rendering. So um, essentially that is what we have presented here. Um, we use their comparison of the chart of the decibels to, to kind of show that. Um, and that's why we made the reference to the refrigerator, essentially, because their conclusion in the report was no neighbor would um, deal with any sound louder than 50 decimals, which is comparable um, to about the sound of a running refrigerator. Um, so I could just add, you see the red areas and it goes to green. The closer you walk up to it, the louder it is, like any object. So if you walk up to the gate, right onto an area of the solar farm, and you're getting close to this, it's going to be louder. Yeah. So, with the distance of at least 500 feet setbacks, we have designed this so the sound doesn't penetrate out to any of the outside of the project, let alone uh, anyone's property, and certainly not anyone driving. What guarantees do you have in that? The third party engineering firm is an independent licensed firm in Georgia. That's why we use third party engineering firms for these kind of things, so it's not hard work, is it? Communicons are pretty well respected. So that's been tested against your other sites in North Carolina? Yes, we do have the other sites. It's the same inverters. They've done the best in the I was just going to add one thing. Um, so I can stand up. My name is Rick. I'm sorry, my name is Francis Kelly again. And um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand, as I said, this is super standardized. This is a very acceptable practice. One thing I'd like to highlight is that um, on the solar farm, solar operations, they kept it at a conservative estimate, which is 50 decibels. There are other solar operations out there that are on the higher end of 60 to 65, which are a lot louder. Now, I do not know um, what the previous person was speaking about, what the, you know, what their conditions were, but we do, I think it's important to show that we were on the conservative side. Okay. Yeah. I also have, I believe, I don't know about the equipment project, but I believe it's a lot more bigger than this project. Okay. Thank you. Well, I think you may answer the question, but thank you.
you, you yes, have one question? Okay. Would you clarify or touch back based on this? You said that y'all y'all financial injection back into Brooks County is two point nine million over forty years. So that was based off of the tax statement we had been uh, working with the development, um, the economic development services department about. Um, we'll obviously have to continue the conversations at this point. Um, but even if we are not getting that tax payment, that only means we will pay more to the county. <coughs> so um, if that tax payment doesn't go through, it would essentially be higher than the two point or roughly two point nine. So more than seventy-two thousand a year. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what's that? More than seventy-two thousand five hundred a year. Um, it, well, so in the point nine over forty years is only seventy-two thousand a year. Well, so in the in the first year, uh, there was a included with the taxes, the economic uh, department. Sorry, I always uh, mess up the name of the department. The economic development services department fee for that. Uh, so that made up the majority of that amount uh, that was going to be paid for the first year. And where I got that, I think you said yes, it's under. Yeah. yeah. So it's less than that per year, 600 up front. Yes. So, so then, then you take the 2.3 and divide it by 40 years, so it's less than that per year. So yeah, first year is 600,000 and then you have to add each year. And I can give you the, uh, you have an Excel sheet of the calculations, but obviously, like I said, we'll have to continue those conversations uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page there. So. Is that tax or economic development? So uh, a large portion of it was the economic development fees. Um, that was roughly $493,000 uh, that we were going to pay uh, up front uh, the first year uh, when this project was operational. And then the rest was the first year of taxes. And did I understand it correctly that when y'all first started, it was only 400, right at 500 acres? Uh, no, it's actually y'all did not go back to the development project. No, so when we acquired the project from Samsung back in March of 2022, it was actually almost double the size. Um, but due to a, a quicker interconnection process that arose with the power, essentially if you decrease a project to 80 megawatts, that's then considered a qualified facility. Um, and so there's a much quicker interconnection process. It takes roughly six months um, for power responses. Um, so we decreased the project when we received it from Samsung um, and decreased the, the land, actually. So, uh, and is that the supplier you will be selling the energy to? That is correct, yes. And you have a contract with them? So the project is currently in study with Georgia Power. Um, so you do not have a contract? Not yet. The project must finish the study with Georgia Power, and then we will receive a, a, a power purchase agreement. Um, but under PURPA, they're required by law to give us a power purchase agreement. That's the guarantee of the qualified facility. You yes. do it. Either you go for a competitive bid process in terms of power, or you go to the internet walk, which is what we do, which is a qualified facility. So they have to take the power. It's just a question of how much they're going to charge you for paying for the uh, upgrades that they're going to have to go on to their Georgia Power system. They okay. pass on them to us by the best customer. Thank you very much. Any other questions I can address? Any others? Thank you so much. Do I have a motion? <coughs> At all. <laughs> Who can make a motion? <laughs> You're talking about you guys, right? <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions to be able to make a motion? 